Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word of the day and uh, happy Wednesday. Hope uh, you are ready to serve God, see what he's going to do and excited about the blessings that he has for us. Hey, uh, today we're in Proverbs chapter eight and we're talking about the value of wisdom. And, and throughout this uh, chapter, Solomon talks about how precious wisdom is. I want you to hear some of what he says. Uh, in verses 10 and 11, he says this, Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. Or how about verses 18 and 19? He says, Riches and honor are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, even fine gold, and my yield better than choice silver. The value of wisdom is more than that. Or how about verses 35 and 36? This is in fact actually where I want to focus uh, the rest of the time. He says, for whoever finds me, talking about wisdom, whoever finds wisdom finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me, wisdom, love death. Wow. Wow. Pretty strong statements. Sounds, uh, you know, very clear that if you want life and if you want God's favor, then you need to pursue wisdom. Again, Solomon is trying to get his kids to see that if you want to have a life that is blessed, you have to actually actively pursue wisdom and you have to value something in order to pursue it. And he says it's more valuable than silver or gold. It's more valuable than all these other things, even than diamonds and rubies and emeralds and jewels. It's the most valuable thing that you can pursue in terms of knowledge. And he says, look, those people who reject and ignore wisdom, they injure themselves and they love death. Uh, doesn't it look like that sometimes when you see people who are being self-destructive? You go, what are they thinking? Why are they doing that? Uh, it's because at some point in their life, somewhere along the way, they made a choice to reject the wisdom of God. Now, maybe they didn't know the wisdom of God. Maybe they didn't listen to it, but they, they made an intentional choice to not listen to God's will and God's word. Uh, and it's so black and white on paper. Because you're listening to me and you're probably saying, yep, that's right, that's right, that's right. And I agree with that. But um, it's difficult to live this out. So I'm going to be really unfair and, and ask you some questions that you're obviously not going to answer to me, but you and God probably should have a conversation about these things. So, um, you know, we're supposed to value wisdom. Would you rather be wise or wealthy? See, it's really easy to, to answer the church answer of wise, but honestly, do you dream more about God revealing truths to you or about winning the lottery? Would you rather be wise or would you rather be wealthy? Would you rather be a person of integrity or a person of popularity? In other words, do you want God to think highly of you or do you care more about what other people think about you? Uh, that, that's, a, that's a tough one because all of us, again, the easy answer as a follower of Jesus is, well, I care about what God thinks, but what about other people? And do you do things to try to win the approval of other people that do not have the approval of God? Or how about this question? How much money would it take for you to compromise your morals? How much money would it take for you to compromise your morals? And, and a lot of you are probably going, oh, I would, I wouldn't, I, I'm not for sale. I would never compromise. Um, um, really, because I've seen committed Christians, and I say committed Christians, people who are active in church for a long time, who espoused their faith, who, who had actually been leaders in different ways, sacrifice their integrity for pensions and social security benefits. Probably step on some toes right now, but... Um, I've known a lot of people who are longtime Christians that after their spouse died and, and they found somebody else and, and they chose not to get married and live with them because financially it was better that way. That's compromising your morals for money. Uh, and, and that may be offensive to some, but that's what Solomon is saying. This is why it's so dangerous. I've seen servants of God, uh, leaders, pastors, people who, who represented Christ destroy their families by indulging in cheap thrills. And yeah, we can all justify or explain or say this is why they did it, this is why, but it, it still boils down to the fact that they chose not to be wise in that moment. And they, and they 
tore apart their family, church families, other families, because of their actions that were not wise. And, and so the question is never about whether you agree with Proverbs. Again, I hope you're reading these every day. I hope you're listening in. It's not about whether you agree with the Word of God. The question is whether you live by the Word of God. Are you living out the wisdom that Solomon is coaching us to, to live? Or are you trying to live by your own wisdom? Uh, that's the real hard choice. Let me close with this. Verse 35, for whoever finds wisdom finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. I pray that you will find wisdom because if you find wisdom, you'll be living in God's favor. God bless and have a great day.